the Lord of the colors. One color to rule them all and in the darkness bind them. Hey, I don't have time for that. Okay, just tell me what the color okay, is now. Okay, okay. I'll give you a clue, okay? It's in the thumbnail. It's literally in the thumbnail. I saw the thumbnail. There's nothing in the thumbnail. It's one of those stupid YouTube faces that you said you never do. It's clickbait. Just tell okay. me what the color is. Let me give you another clue. You grab that color picker thing in Procreate on the iPad and scroll through the hues. And what do you see in that little square for all the different colors? I see random it's in colors. All of them. And then you grab a master painting and go to different spots on the painting and, and find the color there. What do you notice about the color in so many parts of those master paintings? I see more random colors. So as you move towards the left of the box for any color in this color selection interface, you'll see the color desaturated, less vivid and less pure. So on the left side, on the far left, it's always the same. It's just the grays. So when you randomly pick a color, even on that super colorful painting, the interesting thing is that more than half the time, the colors are on the left half. They're closer to the gray than to the pure color. So then you look at those photos from bright sunny days with blue skies, green fields, loads of color, loads of light, loads of the colors when you go into it are actually closer to the gray side than the full saturation side. Then you can grab some human figures and notice how much the colors skew towards gray, even in their skin tones. Okay, listen man, okay, gray is boring. No, Ooh. gray is amazing. Look, I'm gonna tell you about three amazing things about the color gray. So here's a color wheel and there's actually various color wheels out there which help you understand different things about color. In future videos we'll talk about the different wheels but that's another time. Anyway notice in the middle it's gray. So gray is a color that all the other colors can touch on this wheel because when you reduce saturation they all move towards the gray. So if you want to go from blue to yellow, you pass through gray. Okay, so check this out. You see this really strong orangey yellow paper. So here I'm going to change the light to blue and look at what happens. It doesn't stay the same color. It doesn't turn blue either. It becomes more gray, much more gray. Okay, I get it. When you mix colors, they become gray. No, that's not it. So I am saying that gray is amazing for various reasons, but I'm not saying that any time colors mix, then things are going to shift towards gray. The blue light shifted the yellow orangey paper towards gray because they're opposed on the color wheel. So if you look at this paper, it's a grayish blue. It's really gray with some blue in it. And when I hit it with that blue light, the blue becomes more vivid, more saturated. The color is enhanced by the light. So that's also one reason why you might find really saturated shadows on figures because there's going to be a lot of warmly colored light bouncing around in those shadows. So it's a myth to think that shadows are always desaturated in gray because it depends on the light bouncing around in them. So I think gray is sometimes misunderstood. It's not boring. It's not necessarily the color of the shadows. So check this out too. This red paper, when I hit it with that same blue light, it doesn't just become gray because blue and red aren't opposed to each other on the color wheel. So the blue just shifts the red across the wheel towards purple a little bit. Now another cool thing though about gray is because it's in the middle of the color wheel, gray surfaces seem to shift more easily towards the color of the light that's landing on it. So like that street scene that we saw in the last video, we saw that the warm sunlight made the street a warm orange gray, and then the blue sky made the shadow areas a sort of bluish gray. So it kind of seemed quite easy to shift the color towards orange or towards blue. And I think that's because it started out in the middle, desaturated. So let's see that again. So Check out the shadows uh, on these trains, this little train set. This is my daughter's train set. So 
there's light coming in here, bouncing off the little trains and into the shadows onto the surface, which when it's a gray surface, the shadows become the color of the reflected light. Even though that reflected light is really weak, it's still enough to shift the color of the uh, shadows towards the color of the light. But when the surface is a strongly saturated color like this red paper, the color of the shadows doesn't move with that weak light. So when it's a gray, grayish surface, I think it's more easy for the color of the light to shift the color of that surface. I mean, I just can't believe that you said that gray is boring. I mean, you must be really dumb. Hey, whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, that's enough. Okay, forget that idiot. Let's talk to someone nice, someone cool, Jared Cullum instead. He's super passionate about color, super passionate about painting. He's a really good teacher. So let's have a little chat with him about some master paintings and the role of gray in them. You know, everything's kind of dull gray green. And then look at this red flower in the tablecloth even, you know, you have this high saturation. So what, what you end up doing when you have a lot of saturation, which I've kind of used this example talking with you before, with other stuff too, with value and other things, is it's kind of like if you've got, if you've got these bright greens and bright stuff happening everywhere all over this image, you know, green, green, high saturation green in this area or on her dress even. If you've got high saturation happening everywhere, it's kind of like a boxer with their arms fully extended, just sort of like swatting at the person. And it's it just doesn't have the effect. And maybe they're really strong and it can annoy the person, but you're not you're not using the tool of punching like a boxer uh, who ideally would want to, and I don't know anything about boxing, but I imagine one would want to use jabs in a sense or use some kind of lighter punch to control the person and then really knock them out with a strong punch, you know? So you're, it's like watching a boxer flail at a person if it's all high saturation, where it's like, man, you could use this as a tool to really knock the person out. So by using all that greenish gray, Tiso set up the red to have a bigger impact. So now Jared's going to talk us through another painting, a really gray painting by John Singer Sargent. Um, a, a painting that is almost all gray, you know, but it still reads beautifully. You're still getting, even in this gray image, you're still getting tons of variations from warm transitioning into cool, warm where light is bouncing back up, you know, you have all these warms inside the hood here, all this down here picking up light that's bouncing all around. And then he has this brighter rug and her warm here against this cool sort of, it draws your focus in. It kind of helps us to draw focus to this, this uh, person. So we've learned that as colors desaturate, they move towards gray. And so it's like a unifying color. And then when you go out into nature, a lot of the colors that we see are closer towards the gray than we might realize, even people's skin tones. And when you think of a color wheel, it, you know, the sort of superstar colors on a color wheel are on the outer edge, these really saturated, vivid versions of red or of green or whatever. But a master artist is often going to play around closer towards the middle, closer to the greys. And then when they use a more saturated color, it's going to have more impact. So the use of gray is really important to give the more saturated color more power. Learning about color has been way more interesting than I even thought it would be. And I hope you guys are enjoying this series. The next video has some really mind blowing stuff about color in it. Um, there should be a really good video up on the screen now for you to check out and I'll put some more resources about color in the description below as well. Don't forget to check out Jared's YouTube channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.